वेलकम फ्रेंड्स टू पावर प्लांट गुरु यूट्यूब चैनल फ्रेंड्स आई एम ए मैकेनिकल इंजीनियर विद अराउंड ट्वेंटी ईयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन द फील्ड ऑफ पावर प्लांट एंड आई यूज टू क्रिएट स्मॉल फंडामेंटल नॉलेज सीरीज वीडियोस फॉर पावर प्लांट इंजीनियर्स वी आल्सो रन डाउट क्लियरिंग सेशंस ऑन वीकेंड्स सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रीच एस यू कैन रीच एस थ्रू कमेंट सेक्शन एंड ज्वाइन आवर वीकेंड क्लासेस let us continue to watch our today's video hi friends welcome to power plant guru youtube channel friends i have created a last uh, video on my last video was on gas turbine startup checks and that video was very popular thank you to uh, my viewers and i would like to uh, start this video fire protection system for gas turbine basis uh, various comments i have received from viewers that uh, i should create a video on fire protection system so that we are doing in this uh, video and one more thing i would like to say that we have started uh, a membership program on this channel so uh, as initially in the previous slide i have shared that uh, we run uh, this weekend classes so if you want to join the class you can join our membership uh, plans wherein you may have the one to one video uh, call session as well for your doubt clearance so let us go to understand the fire protection system in gas turbine so uh, normally there are three types of fire protection system you may not have heard of all but uh, one is halon based which is fm200 another is uh, co2 flooding system and third one is water mist so these are three kind of nfpa approved uh, fire protection system for various equipments for but in case of gas turbine co2 uh, is used why co2 used we are going to cover and uh, why how co2 is extinguishing the fire and what are the total equipment and uh, auxiliaries which support in doing that these are the topics for this video so there is a study which has shown there are different probabilities of fire in different compartment based on the risk so i am quoting a study from edison electric institute where there was a, a, a understanding that 62% of the fire was involved for the turbine compartment 17% fire noticed in accessory and 13% of the total fire was in load tunnel and 8% in the generator so you can see the most uh, the most kind of probable uh, area is uh, the turbine zone so most of the fire which has happened as we all know that there is a lot of risk in turbine compartment high temperature as well as fuel presence so that shows that there is a high chances of fire uh, similarly and now uh, uh, in older machine halons were also used but uh, now carbon dioxide is predominantly used why carbon dioxide is used because carbon dioxide has a advantage over halon that halon if you release there is a uh, surface reaction with that kind of uh, gas was also there so a lot of rusting and corrosion related uh, post impacts were seen where halon was used so that is why uh, slowly this carbon dioxide was uh, the one uh, which gain uh, more uh, popularity so now most of the th places you will see the co2 flooding system is there as a fire extinguishing system and uh, there will be different zones what do we have seen in this kind of category that uh, is normally uh, compartmentalized as different zones and uh, that is why let's say there is a turbine uh, gas turbine different compartment maybe this may be accessory this may be turbine this may be load gear and this may be generator so is let's say there if there is only fire in this area why to flood co2 in all those areas so there is no requirement such as so that is why 
different zones were created and based on those zones uh, CO2 flooding system is designed. In smaller machine there are CO2 cylinder banks and uh, in large machine there are CO2 storage tank is there where liquefied CO2 is uh, stored in that and based uh, uh, on uh, requirement from uh, requirement from turbine in case of any fire the different line for that uh, dedicated zone will be activated and the CO2 gas <coughs> will be uh, liquefied CO2 will be converted into gas and uh, then uh, supply to that particular zone. But let's say if there is any person available in that turbine for uh, taking any reading or taking any doing any inspection or checking uh, any other things as well. So for that there is an initial 30 seconds of warning. So there will be hooters. There will be hooter in all compartment and those hooter basically a nozzle kind of uh, thing uh, which uh, there also a CO2 supply is there and CO2 blows in, in that siren kind of thing and then uh, that siren kind of thing blows by CO2 there is a noise and which is a alarm to the person whosoever is there inside must come out because in next 30 seconds there will be CO2 discharge. So <coughs> as we know that there are different zones and different zones may have different volumes. Why volumes are being uh, asked here? So basically the funda of suppressing the fire is if you know if you know the fire triangle you might know that fire triangle there is a need of oxygen there is a need of fuel and there is a need of heat which is in uh, any any source of heat then only the fire will happen so this is what the fire triangle is called so if you remove any thing from this triangle then fire will be extinguished. So what is doing uh, CO2 flooding system is replacing O2 by CO2. As CO2 is heavier it will replace O2 it will push out A2, O2 and then the fire will be uh, extinguished. So there is a certain percentage of O2 by which if it reduce then there will be extinguishing fire. So that is why volume is calculated and let's say uh, the volume is uh, 10 meter cube. So in 10 meter cube the quantity of CO2 is such that so that you reduce oxygen by let's say 15 percent then you will be able to suppress the fire. So the volume may let's say turbine compartment volume will be 20 meter cube for example. So you have to push more quantity of CO2. Let's say your uh, accessory compartment is only 8 meter cube. So quantity is reduced. That is why the volume part is very important. So carbon dioxide is kind of cheap if you compare with halon and non-destructive also as I was saying in the previous uh, uh, halon is also non-destructive but it has long term corrosion and other uh, issues but CO2 does not have any uh, that kind of issue and whatever concentration you need to extinguish the fire with CO2 does not have very it is a dangerous situation for human but if you compare with halon then CO2 is less lethal. So if you see the minimum required CO2 percentage concentration for fire extinguishment is 34 percent. So whatever volume of your compartment there will be definitely nitrogen, oxygen and other gases present. So you have to calculate 
if there is a fire then the entire volume has to have 34% of CO2 so for that how much CO2 you need that much you have to provide but let's say uh, let's say you have flooded the compartment with CO2 and there is a fire extinguisher also but there will be lot of heat in the turbine compartment and there will be fuel accumulation as well if the turbine is stripped at some uh, gas or some liquid may, may present there and what if the fire erupts again so that is why this this flooding system the one shot single discharge system is is given support by different means of your extended discharge extended discharge so in one go there will be lot of co2 flooding but the extended discharge will have a, a next small quantity of uh, small quantity of co2 will be coming through a small discharge pipe which is called a extended discharge it will keep pushing small quantity of co2 to maintain the co2 concentration such that that there is no secondary combustion starts so this is the initial discharge is called the single discharge initial discharge and then continued discharge is called your extended discharge So I'm sure uh, many of you have already seen uh, this kind of uh, CO2 banks, cylinder banks, wherein you have different uh, zones where you have uh, this kind of discharge systems. There will be one pilot cylinder where if that pilot cylinder uh, is discharged, then it will automatically evacuate all other cylinders in bank. So this uh, kind of system is available in uh, frame 6 or uh, frame uh, 5 up to my knowledge but in larger machine there is a this is a co2 tank maybe the image is not very clear but this is a co2 tank and this tank uh, is uh, you flooded with co2 stored uh, uh, liquid co2 and uh, what i remember uh, with my experience uh, that in frame 9 machine it was around uh, 6000 kgs or so so that kind that qu much quantity of uh, co2 is stored there and then uh, it is uh, available for discharge into uh, different uh, zones so let me draw and show a few of the things which uh, might be of importance into your uh, this CO2 flooding system. So this may be your uh, one tank. Please excuse me for my poor drawings. So this may be your uh, one CO2 tank. Uh, maybe 5,000 or 6,000 kgs of CO2 and uh, you will have some level of it uh, uh, like uh, you can say 50 percent of liquid co2 and then if the temperature of this tank uh, rises this is enclosed there will be another tank uh, jacketed tank inside that thus uh, there will be co2 tank so there will be it will be insulated from outside so 50 to 60 percent of liquid co2 will be there and if let's say there is a temperature increase then the co2 uh, pressure will increase you will have a pressure transmitter or pressure gauge which will show you that okay uh, if the temperature is rising that uh, co2 pressure is increasing so what happens there is a tap off and with the tap off there are chillers chillers which kind of uh, take that co2 and put that again into system uh, just to make that the, uh, the temperature uh, are uh, in check and you have a proper liquid to and gas uh, quantity so that you have that much quantity otherwise if the temperature will be high the pressure will be increasing and then you may not have this much quantity stored so that it liquefied state has to be there 
so this is uh, used by chiller there is another system of evaporator which is uh, not essentially used uh, to increase the temperature which is not uh, really required in uh, and then you have your uh, what we call safety valve uh, just to say uh, as you have safety device and then uh, you have your main piping which is uh, going out from this and there will be a main valve main uh, ball valve will be there uh, which will have your limit switch which gives a signal to your turbine control panel uh, mark 6 saying that okay uh, whether my this valve if it is open then only your healthy signal is there otherwise there is no healthy signal on that so this valve check uh, limit switch is there and uh, normally what happens if people go to turbine compartment for checking anything they normally do it offline and then go and then again come back and uh, normalize the system this kind of practice is there and from here it goes to different zones uh, I spoke about different zones in previous uh, slides so let's say we have uh, four zones here so zone let's say you have four zones so each zone uh, let's say zone one zone one zone one will have three lines one two and three so first line is for your horn or uh, a hooter which is a warning alarm alert basically 30 seconds and then there will be a second line which is your initial discharge this is one time and third line will be your extended discharge so if you see that uh, you go into turbine compartment and uh, or any compartment any zone you go and see you can identify those by line sizes so initial discharge will be very sub biggest size then the extended and the horn will be very small uh, kind of uh, size so all these uh, kind of three systems will be available in each your uh, zone if there are four zones and then four uh, all zones will have three this uh, kind of uh, lines <coughs> and before that there will be this uh, this horn line or uh